I've wanted to make a cutting table for many years, even since I started to make my own clothes. I was so tired of hunching over the floor while cutting patterns that I even considered buying knee pads. At one point, I was thinking about buying a pre-made cutting table, but all of the options I saw were either expensive, flimsy, the wrong size, or otherwise less than perfect. I asked my dad to help me with a plan. I needed a table that would be 90 cm high, with a big tabletop and a few shelves. Oh, and it should be mobile. Then, in a couple of days, my dad, who is amazing, by the way, and yes, I'm legally obliged to say that, uh, he came up with this plan. I will leave a link in the description, if you want to look at it closer. Please note the, all of the measurements here in metric. I could convert them to imperial, but this would be useless, uh, since the United States has different measurement standards for lumber and plywood. And now let's look at it in 3D. There are three shelves, the top one is high enough for my iron, and the bottom two are ideal for my big plastic containers. So let's see how we did the construction. First we had to pick lumber for the legs and plywood for the shelves and tabletop. We had a lot of it in our backyard, so we decided to use all supplies instead of buying it. Then we used a circular saw to cut two big plywood pieces. Here is how we cut them. One of the shelves is constructed from two separate pieces, because we only had two big pieces of plywood and didn't want to buy another one. I didn't film this process, uh, since we had to do this outside and the weather was awful. The next day I started to work on pieces that we cut. This is me marking up and cutting out each corner of two shelves with a jigsaw. This is done to allow the shelves to fit around the legs of the table. The cutters were 10 by 5 cm rectangles with the long side going with the length of the shelf. We used a miter saw to cut the lumber to length. You can get away with just having a circular saw, but having a miter saw will be easier. This step was by far the most time consuming. I sanded off splinters, sharp corners and edges with a belt sander. First I use a coarse sandpaper and then a fine one to make the surface really smooth. I feel like I need to say this. Before you get to work, make sure you have the proper safety equipment. For me this includes a face shield, dust mask, earplugs and gloves. Believe me, you don't want to get the sawdust in your eyes. And it's not like I'm talking from experience or anything. Then it was time to change the wood color, because I wanted something darker. I used a water-based stain and applied it with a sponge to all pieces, except for the tabletop, since it was going to be hidden under layers of fabric. Oh, and I forgot to add, I also sanded all the plywood pieces, because some of them look like this after cutting. I let the stain dry and then I applied a second coat of stain the next day. I left it for another day to dry completely and then I moved all the pieces to my room, since it would be impossible to push the finished table through my doorway. Then we started the assembly. First we placed all legs into their position and attached them to the base. It was a temporary solution, since we were going to install the wheels and secure them to the legs later. Then my dad used support braces to attach legs together, making sure the braces were flush with the top of the legs. This is how it looked after. Oh, and then I glued small pieces of plywood to the legs, since the wheel base plate is wider than the leg base. And while we are on the subject of wheels, I purchased four locking casters. The only problem was that they looked too bright in contrast to the wooden parts, so I bought this paint and gave them a makeover. Then we put the tabletop on the floor and put the main frame on the top, basically turning the table upside down. 
then I mark where the frame will be placed and attach four angle brackets to the tabletop. Then it was time to add the casters. I outline the casters and mark placement for the wood leg screws, and then my dad drill the pilot holes. Because I refuse to walk without a drill guide and I have literally no strength in my arms. Then he installed the casters with leg screws and washers. Then we attach the other casters the same way. Remember that I had one shelf that was constructed from two separate pieces? Well, it was time for me to join them. I used three connector plates that I found in my dad's supplies and a lot of self-taping wood screws. Now I had to attach the shelves to the legs. To do that, I marked each leg on where I needed the shelves to be and then I attached two angle brackets to each leg with self-tapping screws. And yes, the angle brackets are also painted. Then I placed the first shelf where it was supposed to be and secured it in place. And then I repeated the process for the top shelf. Meanwhile, my dad drilled the holes in the tabletop and we put it on the frame. Then I countersunk the holes to allow screws to sit flush with the work surface. After that, my dad attached the tabletop to the frame. And with that, the woodworking part of this project is done. I plan to use this cutting table as an ironing board. So for the first layer, I used waterproof nylon fabric that I had in my stash, so the plywood won't be damaged in case of water leaks. I used a glue gun to attach it to the tabletop. Probably wasn't the best choice, but I couldn't find the staple gun. I started with the long size and then folded and glued the corners. The next layer was bedding. I used a wool blend, because I just couldn't find anything 100% natural in all three shops that are still open in my town. But if you have a choice, then choose insulated or cotton piping. Again, I pinned the long sides, then short ones, and then folded the corners. The next layer is white cotton. To get it to be without any wrinkles, I pinned one side and then pressed it, walking from center to the sides. It was a lot easier to pin this fabric, since I pinned it into the pattern layer. And the last layer is another cotton fabric, and the process for this layer is identical to the previous one. You can actually skip the white cotton layer if you want. I only added it because I wanted another layer between the button and the cover. And this was the last step. Now I just had to put all of my containers and ironing tools on the shelves. I should say that it looks even better than I expected. It moves easily, which is always a plus. The brakes work as they should, and I don't even need to lock all four of the casters to get it not to wobble. And the last great thing, it fits perfectly in the corner of my room, and I didn't even plan for that. Now let's talk about the cost of this table. I got the main parts for free, uh, so I only had to buy the casters, screws, paints and fabrics. As you can see, uh, this table only cost me about $27. If you wonder why it's so cheap, it's because I had to convert the price from Russian rubles to the US dollars, and the exchange rate is quite different now. A few years ago it would be like uh, $70 or $80. So in conclusion, I'm beyond happy with this table and I can't wait to see it at work. I hope this video was at least a bit helpful to you. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. 
Oh, and you can find the supply list along with the plants in the description. I think that's all for today. Thank you for staying with me till the very end, and I'll see you when I see you.